Hello, my spooktacular students. Today, we are going to learn about 1214 additions. So let's get spooky. So 1214 additions are essentially um, a specific kind of addition reaction to a conjugated diene. As we can see here, we have a double single double bond. And so that means, yes, we do have a conjugated diene. And uh, we saw a reaction kind of similar to this in Orgo 1, but there was only one double bond. So let's see how the reaction changes. First step, the double bond will use its extra electrons to attack the hydrogen and steal it. And so at that point, we would add the hydrogen to the less substituted side of the double bond. And we would end up with a positive charge right here. And at that point, we can actually proceed two different ways. I'm going to do the simpler way first. So if we just simply attack with our Br minus, we will add it right here to the positively charged carbon. So we end up with hydrogen and bromine added adjacent to one another. However, here we could have done resonance and we could have moved this double bond over and gotten our positive charge here. Hydrogen would stay the same because it was already added. And now at this point, when our Br- attacks, it will attack to this carbon. And so we will get hydrogen staying put. Bromine is now all the way over here, and our double bond has moved here. And so the way we name these as either 1, 2, or 1, 4 really has to do with um, the orientation of hydrogen and bromine and how close they are to one another. So hydrogen is going to count as 1 because that's the first spot that was substituted. And in relation to hydrogen, bromine is on position two. So we will call this one the one, two product. For this next one, hydrogen will still be one. So we have two, three, four. So the relationship is one, four. So I'll write that here, one, for product. Now that we've drawn this mechanism, let's go through and answer these questions. So the nucleophile in the reaction, as we saw, this double bond is what initially attacked HBr. So A will be the nucleophile. Next question, what's the electrophile? Well, if the double bond is attacking and it's the nucleophile, the thing being attacked is HBr. So B is our electrophile since it's being attacked. The 1, 2 product, as we said previously, will be C. The 1, 4 product will be D. And when we have to decide thermodynamic and kinetic, we have to have a couple different things in mind. So we're going to go right here and talk about kinetic versus thermodynamic. So before I even go into this, I need you guys to remember, we only think in terms of lowest. We never think in terms of highest. And you'll see what I mean in a second. But I want to highlight up here, lowest, lowest, lowest. All right, now that we have that down, what I mean by that exactly is that in the case of the thermodynamic product, you are looking for the lowest potential energy. And low Lowest potential energy pretty much just means you have the most stable product. 
And what this means in specifically the 1214 addition reactions is the most stable double bond. And the kind of opposite, but not in the way you would think, is the kinetic product. So by opposite, I do not mean that it's the highest potential energy. No, by opposite, I mean we're looking at activation energy instead. So the kinetic product is the one with the lowest activation energy. And essentially what this means is that it will be the one created in the fewest number of steps. So least number of steps, AKA fastest. And so what does this mean in terms of um, the one, two, one, four reaction? Well, essentially, it's the one that does not do resonance because it is the one that's going in the least number of steps. And so now, um, a couple different words that he can use that I want you guys to look out for is reversible or at equilibrium or thermodynamically controlled. He's basically saying that the thermodynamic product is going to be preferred. And on the opposite side, if he says under kinetic control, means that the kinetic product is favored. That one's kind of more obvious. And the last thing we're going to talk about is temperature. So the thermodynamic product is favored at high temps. And the reason for this is um, we're making the more stable product. Usually we have to go over a higher activation energy. Usually, not always. And the kinetic product is favored at low temps. And that's because we have the lower activation energy, so it takes less energy to get over the hump. And we'll go over this reaction diagram in one second, but let's first go back up here. And so now we know that in the context of one, two, one, four reactions, the kinetic product, I'll write it again over here, the kinetic means the fastest and fewer steps versus thermo means more stable double bond. So if we look at our one, two, and one, four products, we see that the double bond for the one, two product is di substituted, and I'll highlight it. So it has one, two substituents, versus in the one, four product, the double bond is actually tri substituted. So we know that the thermodynamic product must be the 1, 4, because it is the most substituted. And you cannot, at this point, assume that since D had to be thermo, that now C has to be kinetic. No, you can't just assume that, because sometimes that won't be the case. But in this case, since the one being formed in the fewest number of steps and it doesn't have to do resonance, resonance takes up a lot of energy, so no resonance, fewer steps. For those reasons, the 1, 2 product is kinetic. So if we look back at these questions, let me just write it here for completion's sake. C will be 
I'm so sorry. C will be the kinetic product, and D will be the thermodynamic product. That is essentially one, two, one, four additions for you. And if we go back to the kinetic and thermodynamic product stuff, I want you guys to see how this also could be applied to a reaction coordination diagram. So I will give you two examples. This one is the first. So in this example, let's say we are uh, under thermodynamic control, aka it's at equilibrium, aka it's a reversible reaction. All that means is that we are starting here. Our little dot is our starting point. And since we have two bumps, two hills on either side, that means that one of these products is the 1, 2, and one is the 1, 4. So this is one product, this is the other. But in this case, we're just going to think in terms of A and B because we don't know which is which. So this point in the hill right there will be the activation energy. And this line down here tells us our potential energy. So now taking what we talked about in this little table, we can tell that the lowest activation energy has to be this one because it's simply just lower on the graph. And we can see that by drawing this. So all I did was draw a line at our base essentially. And we can see that this is a smaller activation energy than this is. But again, it, this one is just physically lower than that one, so we could visually see that. You didn't have to draw anything. So we know that the one with the lower activation energy must be kinetic. So we know that A is the kinetic product. We cannot assume that B has to be thermodynamic. So let's just check if it is or not. So when we're looking at the energy, potential energy, we're going to see which one is lower on the graph. And we can see that A is actually lower than B is. So that means this is the more stable product. And that would mean that this is the thermodynamic product. So in this example, product A, is kinetic and thermodynamic. And it's important to note because you won't always have one product that's kinetic and the other is thermodynamic. You always have to be careful. And the last concept I want to go over for this reaction diagram is if we are under reversible conditions, AKA if we are at equilibrium and he gives you this diagram, you will always say that the most stable product will be formed the fastest. So the most stable product is A, so A will be formed the fastest. Now let me draw our second reaction coordination diagram. So in this case, things are a little bit different, right? Still, we have our starting point in the middle, we have our activation energies up here in red, and we have our potential energies down here in green. And let's start with the kinetic product again. So for kinetic, we look for lowest activation energy, and we can see between here and here, the lower one is B, and just to confirm, let's draw in our lines. Cool, so now that I have drawn those, we can confirm that yes, that is the case. B will be the kinetic product. Next, let's look for the lower potential energy, and I'm actually gonna draw the lines just because these are a little bit closer. So now in this case, we can see that A is much lower than B, 
So that would mean that A is our thermodynamic product because it's, it has the most stable product. So in this case, we see an example where the kinetic and thermodynamic products are not the same. So in the top example, the one we just did right here, we can see that it's a little bit different because the thermodynamic and kinetic products are not the same. Thermo is still the one with the lowest potential energy though, and kinetic is still the one with the lowest activation energy. If he gave you a question that said, this reaction is at equilibrium, what will be formed the fastest? Now you actually say that the least stable is formed the fastest in this example. So the reason for that is the activation now or the activation energy is lower now for the kinetic product, which is not the same as the thermodynamic. So this one will be formed the fastest. However, if he asked which product would be predominantly formed or favored, if we're at equilibrium, the most stable product will be formed. So I will clarify that one more time because it's an important concept. If he were to ask you in examples one and two, these are both at equilibrium, which of the products will be formed the fastest? And so for number one, we can see that the activation energy is lowest for the kinetic product. So the one forming the fastest would be Kinetic, a.k.a. B, a.k.a. the less stable one. In example number two, though, if he asks you at equilibrium which one is formed the fastest, the kinetic and thermodynamic are the same. So the lowest activation energy will lead to the most stable product. So A will be formed the fastest, a.k.a. the kinetic and thermodynamic product, a.k.a the most stable product. But if he asks you which one is favored or which one is created the most, we can look at number one again. The one that is the most stable will be favored at equilibrium. So A is favored at equilibrium. For two, we see that A again is the one with the lowest activation energy. So A will still be favored, and that one is now the kinetic and thermodynamic product. So that's it for 1214 additions. Here's your little cheat sheet for that. Happy studying, and good luck.